Well, Razorback fans, it's a what if Wednesday today. What if Arkansas sports in the big three, all three, have an amazing year in 2024 and 2025? Well, I guess we can just as easily talk about it on today's Locked on Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked on Razorbacks. Your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. And welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of the John Neighbors Show, which you can catch every weekday afternoon starting at 4 on Natty State Sports and NattyStateSports.com. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Wednesday as uh, we'll talk a little bit about the football schedule that got released with the time windows. It's kind of a new thing for the uh, SEC and Arkansas, and I'm sure I'll agree with all of the different things that Arkansas got or didn't get when it came to their windows. (laughs) I like saying just their windows. So anyways, it doesn't matter. It's still going to be interesting to talk about, but I did want to start with something today that... Uh, kind of got me thinking. I posted a video yesterday. It was just something I saw on TikTok and used as inspiration. I thought it was really funny. And what it was, I would play it if I wouldn't get demonetized. But what it simply was, was just a remembrance of the 2021-2022 academic sports season for Razorback sports, at least for the big three. And just... Throwing back to that and seeing how like great it was and how different it was. You know, we talked about how this past year was the worst in Razorback history, arguably. But that was a year where, man, a lot of things, a lot of things went went into it. And a lot of things kind of was shown from the great football season that you had after being down for so long, going nine and four and winning the Outback Bowl, and beating Texas, rushing the field. That was a great moment. And then you had also Razorback basketball, knowing the regular season, they had that big-time win against Auburn, the number one team, and they rushed the court and had all the fun memes from it. But you also made it to the Elite Eight. You beat Gonzaga, the number one overall seed, to get to that point. And even in baseball, you ended up going to the College World Series after beating Oklahoma State in that regional and then beating North Carolina in the Supers that was the last time you've been to Omaha. And I look back on that and I'm like, man, that was a great run. And also, I think I think it was the same year. Yeah, it was. The same year that Arkansas softball even won the SEC for the first time. And also uh, soccer making it to the Elite Eight. So even some of the other teams uh, did did really well and, and had a really successful year. It seems, seems like eons ago, doesn't it? Like just seeing how things have gone and how things have transpired since then, it just kind of seems, man, so different, so different. But, you know, I I, I talked about this on my show yesterday. It's like you have pretty much a year like you had this past year, and it's easy to kind of think that you're in purgatory or that you're never going to get out or that everything sucks, which, you know, it it could. (laughs) It could. But, you know, I think back to that point in time when Arkansas had that great run in those three major sports. Folks, that was just two years ago. Two years ago. It wasn't decades. It wasn't eons. It wasn't in the last century. It was two years ago. Now, obviously, a lot's changed since then, mainly basketball. But my point is, is that if you just look at it in that perspective... That t- that year can happen again, may happen again. And it's showing you that, yeah, it can turn pretty quickly for the worse, which, you know, I think it did after two years, but it can also quickly turn around for the better as well. Because if you think about the two years prior to that in 2021 and 2022 was 19 and 20. Granted, the COVID came in and ruined a lot 
of what was going on. But you know, your football team, there's Chad Morris here. You went two and ten. Basketball, you weren't going to make the NCAA tournament. It was Muss's first year. SEC tournament got canceled, but you're a decent team, but you weren't going to make the tournament. And then in baseball, I mean, we really didn't have much to see. Heston Kirstad was killing it. He's still my Golden Spikes winner, but you know, it wasn't like the team was setting the world on fire in the beginning. The pitching was an issue. I remember that. And so point is, is that that two that year that you had that was so great, two years before that, it was rough too. So I set that up to ask the simple question of what if, what if Arkansas as an athletic department, and we're talking about the big three here, the ones that make the revenue and the ones that have the, the, the biggest following, because we know like track's always going to be good and whatnot, but what if those big three sports are great again? I, I look at it and I'm like, there's potential. There's potential. It's easy to kind of say everything's bad, but just stay with me on this. We'll start with baseball. Yeah, baseball had a bad ending to the year. Disappointing to say the least. They went one and two in the regional that they hosted as a national seed. Just poor showing. Poor showing. And we know that Arkansas has been in positions where they haven't made the College World Series before. They haven't made it every year. They've made it frequently, but not every year. It is tough to do. But if I was to tell you that next year, like don't, no details, no if ands of how it gets there, just next year, Dave Van Horn is going to make it to Omaha. And the Razorback baseball team is going to make it to Omaha. If I told you that, would you say there's no way? No, you wouldn't. You could totally see it. They have to do things. They have to, they have to recruit. They have to get more players. They have to change some things. Absolutely. But is it far-fetched to think that Dave Van Horn couldn't fairly easily get the team back in Omaha next year? Absolutely could happen. In fact, it's more likely that it happens than it doesn't, in my opinion. Let's take basketball. I mean, come on. <laughs> come on. We know. John Calipari, this team, this roster, what they've put together. You can't sit there and tell me that you think that it's going to be a bad year. You know, I guess anything's possible. But you cannot sit there with a straight face with John Calipari as your coach, the talent that you've brought in, the excitement surrounding it. You cannot tell me that this is not going to be great, even in year one. Sure, there's a lot of things that could happen. I mean, NCAA tournament's crazy. You never know what's going to happen there. But again, if I told you that the Razorback basketball team makes the Final Four next year without any details of how it happened, is it far-fetched? No. Is it possible? Yes, very possible. And there's no reason to believe otherwise. And finally, for football, I think save the most interesting for last. Football-wise, Arkansas is going to be more than likely picked 14th out of 16th teams in the SEC best-case scenario. They'll be picked bet maybe above Vanderbilt, maybe above Mississippi State, maybe above South Carolina, but it would be the only three teams that I could see Arkansas maybe being ranked above. Just the reality. The expectations are not high. You're coming off of a rough year. You didn't have any major portal gets that just get everybody thinking, oh my gosh, this is going to blow everybody's minds. But you're not going to compete for a national championship in football. Not this year. You're not going to compete for an SEC championship. You're not going to compete for a 10-win season. But if I told you this team was going to win eight games next year, would you be surprised? I think you probably would. Let's be honest. But could they? Could they? Because, I mean, best case scenario is like Bobby Petrino's offense clicks, gets going, team is rejuvenated, re-energized. They're better at decision-making and game management. They get a few balls to bounce their way. I mean, 
a seven, eight win season is not out of the realm of possibility. Most people are not going to predict it, but it's not impossible. And if you, as a Razorback football fan, won seven, we'll say eight games. If you won, if Arkansas went eight and four next year, would you take it? Of course you would. So that's the biggest question mark is football usually is. But I brought all that up is what if Arkansas is able to do those things next year? It's going to prove a lot. It's going to prove that sports are cyclical and crazy and unpredictable at times. It's going to prove that John Calipari obviously still has it. Dave Van Horn still great at what he does. One of the best. And that Sam Pittman can still coach. That's what it'll prove. But more importantly than anything, it'll prove that you can win at a high level in Arkansas still. I understand it's easy to be down, dwell on the negative. It's easy. But right now, there's potential. There's hope. And as long as you have that, you have something to look forward to. We'll talk about the schedule here in just a second, but uh, I got to tell everybody about the Game Time app here on the Locked on Razorbacks podcast. We know that it is going to be a year of concerts, right? I mean, we love sporting events, but here in Arkansas, we kind of slow things down. And you want to be able to go to some shows, go to some concerts, go to some comedy shows, everything like that. Really get out and about for that. Well, with the Game Time app, they can get you squared away and taken care of because they are the best app when it comes to buying tickets to set events. You can save up to 60% off by buying last minute for any of these events, whether it's sports concerts, comedy theater, anything like that. Uh, You can look at the seat views as well. You get a panoramic view of the seat from the app, inside the app, before you buy it. So that way you're not waiting, man, these seats suck. It's like, no, you got a chance to look at them. It's it's spot on view. You get to check it out. And they also have the lowest price guarantee or game time will credit you 110% of the difference right back to you. The best thing about it is they have all-in pricing. It's a toggled feature to where you can get all the fees, everything up front, and so you don't have to worry about, oh, you pay one, you look at one price, like, hey, it's a great deal, but by the time you get to the end, it's doubled in price. Like, there's just no reason for that, and game time doesn't feel so either, so they give you that option. So take the guesswork out of buying any tickets, NBA Finals tickets, concert tickets, anything with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-C-O-L-L-E-G-E for $20 off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. Last-minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so moving on into the next segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Um, the game time windows were released for the Razorback football team. Well, every SEC team. And it's kind of unique because this is the first time. Well, I'll say unique, but it's also kind of sad. It's the first time that CBS is not going to be in charge of the game of the week. I know. I hate it. I'm going to miss the music. I'm going to miss uh, the the pomp and circumstance knowing that, hey, if you you if you played a football game, at 2.30 on CBS, you were the game of the week. You were the, you were the top dog. I'm going to miss having that because it was always very obvious. But I will say the, ter- the, the change on that, and it's, that's about pros and cons, but a change on that is that since it's all ESPN, you can at least have these windows. Now, what the windows are is that they don't have a set time, but they have, as is described, a window. They have the early window, which is a game between 11 a.m. and noon central time. They have the afternoon window, which is between 2.30 or 3.30 in the afternoon. They have the night game window, which is a start time of 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. And then they have the flex, which is a game time between 2.30 or 7 o'clock. So it gives you a pretty good idea. It gives you a pretty good idea of exactly what's going to go down. If you want to plan for tailgates, if you want to plan for whatever, it gives you an idea for it. So focusing specifically on the SEC games, because that's what matters, um, and because we already knew the times for a few of the others. We'll start with the Auburn game. That game on the road is a flex game. So it's either going to be at 2.30 or 3.30 or 7 o'clock. It's going to be from either 2.30 or 7 o'clock. It's going to be an afternoon to night game. 
So they reserve that. So that on the road is going to be an atmosphere I'm sure is going to be fairly electric. And uh, last time that Arkansas played at Auburn, they won. The year before that, they did win. It's just the officiating crew did not allow it to happen. So who knows? Maybe Arkansas can make it three in a row that they end up winning against the Auburn Tigers there on the road. But that game's going to be an afternoon or night game. The Texas A&M game, I kind of like this. It's just officially an afternoon game. It's going to be either a 2.30 or 3.30 down there in Arlington. It's the final game in Arlington. Thank goodness. Put it out of its misery. But that game is going to be mid-afternoon, which... I kind of talked about this on on my show, but I think it's nice to be able to go from, all right, well, you can go from right over here and Little Rock, say, for instance, drive down, wake up early in the morning, drive down, go to the game, drive back. It's not ideal, but if you wanted to, it at least sets you up to do so. So that game's going to be there. Now you get to your first home game of the SEC slate against Tennessee on October 5th. That's in the flex spot. So that game's either going to be at 2.30, between 2.30 and 7.00. So no matter what, that game is going to be afternoon or night. Um, I don't care either one. I mean, I always like kind of afternoon games, to be honest, because especially in the early going, because then you have, once the game ends, it's not like midnight. <laughs> you have time to do other things, go out and about, hang out, keep tailgating, whatever it is. So I'm kind of hoping for that because the next game against LSU and the LSU Tigers, that game's at night, straight up. It's at night. Not even a question. It's either going to be at 5 p.m., 6 p.m., or 7 p.m. So I love that. Battle for the Golden Boot. It's going to be at nighttime in Fayetteville. The morning game, the only early game that you have, or two early games that you have set, uh, Mississippi State on the road. That Yes, that is an 11 a.m. game all over it, and that's fine. Understandable. The one I don't like, though, is the Ole Miss game. That Ole Miss game is also at 11 a.m. or noon for Arkansas at home. That's the next week. Don't like that. That game's always crazy, but who knows? Maybe because it's early in the morning, it'll get even crazier. So you have that, and also the one that may be the most egregious is the 11 a.m. game for Texas at home. It's going to be on ABC or ESPN, so it's on the 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 main channel, but it still sucks because uh, you're going to have to have that game at 11 a.m. as as an old rivalry. It would have been nice to have it at least an afternoon or night, but your final two SEC games are going to be at 11 a.m. Sucks, but that's the way it is. So I don't think Arkansas got screwed necessarily. I'm fine with everything but the Texas and Ole Miss games. But you're gonna have you're gonna have noon games. You're gonna have 11 a.m. games no matter what. I just wish that the final two SEC games at home were both not at the 11 a.m. spot or the early spot. That that sucks. Could could at least gotten one. One is an afternoon game. I would have taken a 2:30 game, but that's not the case. So, anyways, we'll talk about something I really don't care about, but seems like schools do. You're on the other side of the break, so stay with us. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so final segment here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Um, just going to use this as a little mini rant, and I'm not hating on anyone in specifically. I, I may come off as kind of a jerk in this whole thing, and that's fine. But one thing I was talking to with some friends about, Schools, U of A's done this, and they really did it under the Jeff Long era, the Brett Bielma era, and it just really rubbed me the wrong way. Um, but I always hated it, absolutely hated it, whenever Arkansas would tweet out or post a, a social media post when things were bad, but Arkansas wasn't winning on the field, but yet grades and APR and all that stuff were just blown up and continued to be like celebrated. Like it, it's it was so frustrating to me that it became a joke among my friends and I. Just well, at least the grades are good. The team's four and eight, but hey, the grades are good. Like I can I can get that you want to celebrate any sort of thing that you could possibly have when it comes to success, on the field, off the field, in the classroom, everything. That's nice. That's great. Like I'm not saying every player should be terrible in school. I'm not saying that. It's just not a point of emphasis, and it's not something that fans care about. Because what the social media aspect of things when it comes to a sports team, they do that for the fans. That's who it's for. And if I can tell you anything about fans, fans do not care about grades or APR. And if you do, folks, you're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. If you want to be a doctor, then be a doctor. If you want to be a lawyer, be a lawyer. They're going to give you every opportunity to do it. Fans want winning. 
Success on the field is what they care about. I would rather have a team that is barely eligible to play across the board that's successful on the field than a team that is Rhodes Scholar 4.4 GPA is going to be future presidents and politicians and doctors and lawyers and all that that goes 6 and 6. I do not care about grades. Do not care about the APR. Are you eligible? Great. That's all I care about. Moving on. Let's go. So I've seen a lot of schools do it, and it's just so funny to me. If you want to promote something, promote what you got going on on the field. And I don't even mind. I guess I should say this, too. I should have said this in the beginning. I don't even mind a post about it. What I don't want is it being hammered over and over and over again, like each and every week, posting something about the GPAs. Hey, it's the record GPA the past 10 years. Sweet. We just got blitzkrieged by TCU. Awesome. That's fun. So, yeah, it's a, I, I don't care for that stuff, and you shouldn't either. So it's just something funny that I wanted to bring up. A little mini rant, and I'm still going to make fun of it no matter when it happens. So appreciate everybody listening in and watching in to the Locked on Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at John Neighbors Show for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. Keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel. Tomorrow afternoon, have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.